Well, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. It is our Sunday gathering time. Welcome everyone. Had a little disco music there before we started. Our theme is time. If we haven't yet met, I'm Sandra Champlain, hostess with the mostest. I'm joined today, so luckily, by two gentlemen. We've got Mitch Shirley and Darren Wynn. Yay. Carrie and Phil, who are normally with us, they are teaching one of their classes today. So while the uh Cats away, the mice will play. Isn't that what they say? So we had a little joke beforehand that all of us were going to wear the same color lipstick, but the gentleman did not put theirs on. So you never know with our Sunday gatherings each week, we have a different theme and Mitch was kind enough to pick our theme of time today, but we can be creative. We can have a little fun. We join the two worlds. Not that we need it because our loved ones in the unseen world, they always keep an eye on us and a foot in our world. And we just love being together. We love to inspire you. We love to make a difference. And trust me, every Sunday gathering means as much for us as it does for you. So while we're together today, Darren will be doing our prayers and also the words of the week. Mitch is kind enough to do our address and also our medium demonstration. And then you've got me for the reading and for the healing and for all the DJ music behind the scenes. So our chat box is always open. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know where you're from, what brings you here today, whatever. We you're just as much part of our community, even though we can't see you, we know you're here. We do. And those of you who are watching the replay, we are grateful that you watch as well. We'll give you everything we've got really, truly to lift your hearts and put a smile on your face and let you know how dearly loved you are. So as we begin, I'd like to turn it over to my dear friend, Darren, please, for our opening prayer. Thank you for that introduction, Sanja, and a massive welcome and hello to each and every one of you. And like Sandra said, you know, these Sunday gatherings, we'd like to have fun and cheer people up and truly try and make a difference within the world. So if you do all like to close your eyes and join me for today's opening prayer. We come together once again here on this Sunday as friends, brothers and sisters from various countries within our lands. We come together here today with the same goal and the same intent to unite the two worlds together as one once again under that banner of we don't die to our dear friends helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen we come together here today in love peace and harmony united once again to be within your presence and to allow your thoughts and words that are shared here today through the minds of our workers to bring us all those moments of peace healing and upliftment as we come here today, joined together as one, we do so as unique individuals and souls that we are, but we come together here today as equals, and we come together in the knowing and understanding that country of residence, language spoken, and our own personal backgrounds and understandings holds no barriers or boundaries within your world, as each and every one of us is treated as equals, and each and every one of us can allow ourselves to fall back into the arms of eternity once again and immerse ourselves in that unconditional love and that healing balm of the unseen world to allow us to leave this Sunday gathering in a better place than when we started. Each and every one of us that works on behalf of the unseen world and represents the unseen world does so with the utmost truth and integrity and to the best of our abilities and understandings and we truly hope we can make you proud here today and truly make a difference for all of mankind. As we open up the Sunday gathering and our theme of time, we come together in a time when our world is in great need of extra love, healing and compassion for all of mankind so we can truly make this world a better place. So as we enter this Sunday gathering, we do so with positivity within our hearts and our minds and smiles upon our faces and love in abundance so that we can truly create that perfect meeting ground for the two worlds to come together as one once again. And we ask once again and that healing light continues to shine to all four corners of our world to bring that joy, that love and that healing to wherever it may be needed within the world. So without further ado, my friends, we welcome you here today. Amen. 
Thank you very much, Darren. And now for the reading. Once upon a time in a small town nestled between rolling hills and lush forests, there lived a young man named Darren. Young Darren was a dreamer, always looking to the future and striving to achieve his goals. He often found himself lost in thoughts of what could have been or what might be, and he struggled sometimes to fully appreciate the present moment. One bright and beautiful morning as Darren was taking a walk through the town square, he encountered a wise man named Mitch. Mitch was known for his compassion and wisdom, and he had a serene presence that seemed to transcend time itself. Intrigued by his gentle demeanor, young Darren struck up a conversation with Mitch. As they talked, Mitch shared with Darren a profound insight that would change his perspective on life forever. Mitch spoke of the illusion of time, how the past was but a collection of memories and the future a realm of infinite possibilities. He explained that the only moment that truly existed was the present moment and that it was within this moment that all power and potential resided. At first, young Darren found it a difficult concept to grasp. How could the past be an illusion when its impact felt so real? And how could he set intentions for the future without dwelling on it. But as he pondered Mitch's words, a sense of clarity began to dawn on him. Mitch encouraged young Darren to practice mindfulness and gratitude, to fully immerse himself in the present moment and appreciate the blessings that surrounded him every day. He taught him to set intentions for the future, but not with worry or anxiety, but with a sense of purpose and positivity. Darren realized that by focusing on the present and cultivating this feeling of gratitude, he could shape the course of his life in a more meaningful way. In the days that followed, Darren embarked on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. He spent time alone in nature marveling at the beauty of the world around him. He savored the simple pleasures of life, such as the warmth of the sun on his skin and the laughter of children playing in the streets. He also began a daily practice of setting intentions and goals for his future, expressing gratitude for the present, as well as for his goals as if they were already achieved and mindfully decided to let go of the weight of the past. As he embraced this new way of being, young Darren found that his life began to shift in remarkable ways. He felt more at peace, his relationships deepened, and he discovered a renewed sense of purpose and joy. By living in the present moment and setting positive intentions for the future, he found the strength to pursue his dreams with a newfound clarity and determination. In time, young Darren's newfound wisdom and inner peace inspired those around him. He shared Mitch's teachings with all others he met, spreading a message of hope and empowerment. Together, young Darren and Mitch formed a community dedicated to living mindfully, appreciating the present and manifesting their aspirations through positive words and gratitude. And so young Darren's journey became a testament to the power of the present moment and the transformative potential that lay within each one of us. He learned that by letting go of the illusion of time, embracing the now and setting intentions for the future with gratitude, anyone can shape their destiny and live a life of purpose, fulfillment, joy, and on top of it all, have some fun in the process. I'd like to share a few quotes I found about time. This is from Carl Sandburg. 
Time is the coin of your life. It is the only coin you have and only you can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest you let other people spend it for you. Lao Tzu said, time is a created thing. To say I don't have time is like saying I don't want to. William Penn said, time is what we want most, but what we use worst. And Max Frisch says, time does not change us. It just unfolds us. Great words. I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to go into our healing and Phil has picked Harry Styles song, Sign of the Times. Now it's a little longer than our normal healing song, but it's a beautiful song. And I look to see what the meaning was behind it. It is written from a point of view as if a mother was giving birth to a child and there's a complication. Imagine that the mother is told the child is fine, but you're not going to make it. The mother has five minutes to tell the child, go forth and conquer. So that's what the song's about. So see, see if you can stay in the present moment, feeling love, feeling gratitude, and we send healing to the world, really, truly imagining people healthy and well, the world's problems, history, living in peace. And I know it may be a difficult thing to grasp, but it really does come from our intentions, our positivity. And you know what a ripple effect positivity is, just like in our story about young Darren. So even if we don't understand how the healing powers work from beyond. I know that anytime we can feel good and feel that gratitude, that healing power is used to where it's needed in the world. So after the address, uh, let me back up with time. <laughs> after the song, we will hear Mitch for the address. So let me find Harry Styles for you in our healing song. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening, Darren. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> mm, time. That song took me, and the meaning behind it, took me back to a moment in time that I'd not considered. Um, earlier on this week, Phil asked me, uh, had I got a choice? And time just popped into my head. As usually happens in my head, there's not a lot else that came with it. I just got time. So I said, just time, though I have no idea what will come out of my mouth. And that is what's just happened. That song, I could feel the emotion and I could feel myself being transported to a moment in time. Um, that was very, very worrying. It was a moment in time when there was a possibility of losing Kath and our twin daughters, the moment of birth. And whenever I am in that moment, the whole experience washes over me because what i've learned through the process of time is to not hold on to the pain that comes with it to allow that feeling to come and understanding that emotion but to actually pass through it rather than stay in that moment. And I remember very vividly, and it's, it is so vivid, the moment of being in a room and waiting, waiting, what's happening, I don't know, because I wasn't allowed into uh, the theatre, because it was an emergency. And then 
I was brought one of my twins and then the second. And at that moment, I distinctly remember talking to the spirit world out loud, which is not something that I have done since. I've always done it through thought. And I remember asking for the protection. And I remember communication that had come prior to this birth of the twins when Kath was pregnant, earlier in the pregnancy. And I remember in a, in a circle within the church that her grandfather came and he brought a knight to stand guard, to protect her, to protect the children. And since that day, one of our children has cerebral palsy and epilepsy. But you see from that one moment, <clears throat> that further down the road that I have gone, the more I can see the possibility and gift that she chose to make to all of our lives into all of our extended life. By being restricted in certain aspects, she's taught us so much throughout the time that she has been with us. She has defied the medical profession. She shouldn't be able to ride a scooter. She did. She fell off. She broke her elbow. She shouldn't be able to ride a bicycle without stabilizers. She did. She fell off. She broke a collarbone. We didn't know because for three days she didn't say anything. She lived with it. She endured. She was used to pain just some pain. She was only a young girl. She would have been five, six. But it didn't matter the age. It didn't matter the time that she'd been on this earth. She has a wonderful, incredible gift. She has taught so much to so many. And through the experience of growing and being with her, it's shaped the siblings. It's changed the way that they are and the work that they've been involved in. They've gone into the medical profession, the teaching and caring profession to help others. So that one moment in time, which was very traumatic and has continued to affect all of us throughout in a few weeks, 30 years, she's defied the prognosis that a paediatrician decided what she would be, who she would be. Prognosis is take her home and treat her like a baby because she will never be anything else. Kath was that shocked when she received that information, whilst normally I think she would have just got up and punched her lights out. However, she has mallowed over the years. She just kicks you in your shins now instead of punching your lights out. But that is that aspect of how do we deal with something that is so traumatic, that affects us so deeply, that 
we have a choice. When we lose someone, we have a choice. Do we stay in that moment of pain, of grief and loss? Surrounded by that moment where of their passing. And this happens to so many. Or do we actually set that moment free? And say, that is a moment in time that I can actually visit and I can take something from that. Because if it didn't hurt me so much, I couldn't have loved them as much as I do. Because ultimately, time as we understand it is so precious because we're greedy we want as much of it as we can with our loved ones with our friends there's not enough time in the day but also there can be too many seconds too many minutes and too many hours in a day for others there are many throughout this world who may be enduring life, who are lonely, who are in immense physical and emotional pain. We all need to be an angel sometimes. We all need to look around and recognize the angels that are around us and I believe that part is within all of us that loving caring nurturing beautiful part of us that just gives we all have within us infinite kindness But life and the time we spend on this earth can take away from us if we allow it. It can be a visitor. Our grief and our loss will always be a part of us. It's important that we move forward in our lives, never moving on. Because to move on, means that we left our loved ones on the side of the road or we've carried on down our road looking back over our shoulder and remembering them and what they did what they were what what they meant to us but in lots of ways i like to think of it like like a big bus stop a greyhound station we pull in and there's all these massive buzzes and all these people some get off they wave us goodbye with a wonderful smile thank you for everything that you have been a part of my life thank you for everything that you've given me the tears that you shed with me the times when you have listened to me, but most of all that you've loved me for who I am. And they go and get on another bus. And we stay and carry on our road. But the beauty of what we have within this gathering, within mediumship, is an understanding and awareness that even though we go on a different buzz we can experience that connection and as with this world that we live in now all of us spend longer speaking to somebody if we can see them 
within the phone. The conversations are much longer. But there are still people who are frightened to use the technology. And there are still parts of the technology that has been misused. But if we educate ourselves and we learn for ourselves, we find what is right and what works for us and how we need to be. For some of you, your loved ones will come and communicate in a public forum. For others, they may never choose this way because that was not their way when they were here. But on a private one-to-one, -one, they would take that opportunity. And for others, they will take an opportunity to influence you, to be with you in your sleep state, to spend that time together. I've never ever had a communication from one of my grandmothers. Never. My grandfather, this is on my dad's side, my grandfather has communicated quite a few times, in fact many times. But a few years ago, I remember waking from a dream and vividly, I knew that I'd been with my grandmother. I had conversation with her and I could see my grandfather outside. He loved being in his garden and in his allotment and growing things and spending time and that. And he was still doing the same. And I remember he waved to me and I could hear his words even though he was quite a distance away. And I woke up with overwhelming peace that we'd been able to spend some time together. But because we live in this physical world, we've been taught that we have to have things in the physical way. And ultimately, the physical world only lasts a finite amount of time. But the spirit, the soul is eternal. And when we look back with gratitude, as was said within the reading, there was, I must admit, Sandra, I did feel at times, I was like, what am I going to talk about? She's sort of <laughs> covered pretty much every blade of grass here. <clears throat> Beautiful as it was, and I, I truly it was. But when we actually have those moments in time, treasure them. As Maloko said, make this moment last. But unfortunately, we can't. Because of, we all know when we've been absolutely ecstatic, overjoyed, so excited, like a child at Christmas, can't keep a limb still. It doesn't last. It can't. Because we couldn't do anything in that. We wouldn't be able to eat, go to the toilet, anything. We couldn't function physically if we were excite, overwhelmingly excited. And that's the other side of the coin is with our grief and our loss. Not that we choose up here because the mind actually it's irrelevant because it's our soul's choice. We choose to love. We choose to be loved. We choose to bond and bind ourselves to our loved ones throughout our lives. But also, we need to bond ourselves to ourselves. We need to take the time to allow us to unfold, to allow us to actually see what we're capable of 
through trial and error, through recognizing within others traits that we have as well. And we admire those traits. And that means we're admirable. Because none of us is all good, none of us is all bad. As wonderful as my wife is, she's terrible at recycling. And if you're a wasp or a spider, you have not got a chance. I collect them up in my hands and I chuck them out the window and I put them out and I encourage insects out of the window. It's like, why don't you just kill it? It's simpler. I said, I can't. That's me. But we will all have frustrations in different ways, things that matter no matter how small that matter to us and things that matter to others and if we embrace that and we embrace what our loved ones loved but we might not and just because they've asked us to do things doesn't mean that we have to give that time we have to do it we don't it's a request it's not an order it's not a requirement it's about us finding out about us and in that process helping others to be able to live within that moment and to have a good life to have enjoyed our life to when the end comes that we can hopefully be in a place where we go yeah, I did some good. I did make a difference. I loved so many people. I will continue to love so many people. And just a little thought at the end, as Harry Styles, how do we end our time here? Do we want it with thumbs up, thumbs in the middle, or thumbs down? That is always how things end. Whether we've enjoyed it, whether we've seen something, whether we've gained something from it. So the perspective of time is always important to reflect upon it, to take that moment. And there is one thing I'd like to end on, that within grief recovery, one of the analogies that we do when we try to express to people about making the effort and putting the effort in to change things in our lives and to actually work on our grief and understand our grief and how it affects us. And people go, well, if I give it time, it'll sort itself out. Well, the analogy is when you break down and you've got a flat tire, how many of you actually pull a chair out and sit next to the tire and look at it? If I give it time, it'll sort itself out. I'll leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mitch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no way really to give Mitch a nice standing ovation, but if you want to press that raise hand button as a some gratitude, we welcome you to do that. If you don't know Mitch and his beautiful wife, Kath, by now, their website is thesoultrust.com. They're both advanced grief recovery specialists, as well as mediums and tutors. The last Tuesday of each month, they do a free grief cafe. I always have that posted on the store page at wedontdie.com. And while Carrie and Phil are away in um, New Zealand and Australia, Kath and Mitch will be teaching our medium classes. So I'll tell you more about that with the announcements. But thank you so much, Mitch. There's always something to talk about. And I think what you shared with your family was priceless and precious. So thank you so much. Now, my friends, we're going to move on to our demonstration of mediumship. And it's our time 
to just let you know how close your loved ones truly, truly are. And Mitch is kind enough to be our medium for today. So if you've been here before, or this is your first time here, I'll just tell you a little bit about how this goes, because this part is truly audience participation. It is. Now you see Darren, Mitch, and I being representatives of you, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in the planet Earth and the human world. We'll get a few representatives from the spirit world representing all of our loved ones. So many times people may attend a medium demonstration and because their loved one doesn't come through, they think they're not with them. That is so not the truth. Our loved ones are perfect. They're alive. They are whole and well. They're their best health. They're their best age looking good. They really, truly are. And they continue to grow and learn and love in the spirit world and the land that's very much like we have. But they have a special gift that we don't. They can keep one eye on us, be with us. They can multitask. They are around. And to celebrate our demonstration of mediumship really gives you a closer look at just how close they are. So as these members of the spirit world come through, I ask everyone just to pull their messages close to you, hear the words and know that our, the love never dies. It can't, energy cannot be destroyed. Mitch will ask the spirit world, they probably have it all figured out, just like Phil figured out our order of service today. This is maybe someone who's figured it out on the spirit world, who's going to come through. They know exactly who's with us. You may be in your car or out for a walk or just thinking it's little old you watching your iPad, this thing called the Sunday gathering. But those loved ones of yours, they know you're here. They do. As a member of the spirit world works with Mitch, they'll use everything he's got, probably his memories, his thoughts, his feelings. He'll give a few initial bits of information about the person who has connected with him. We want everybody be on the edge of your seat. We never know who's going to come through or how it works. But if you can recognize the few initial bits of information that Mitch has given about this person, we want you to press your raise hand button. And you may have already pressed your raise hand button just now with uh, applause for Mitch. But if you want to see how it works on your side, please feel free to press it, depress it. It'll go from raise hand to lower hand, raise hand to lower hand. Why this is important is sometimes there may be two or more people that can take the initial bits of information. And Mitch will continue on working to get it down to one, one hand standing, <laughs> one person with their hand raised. That's the idea anyways. And so you'll want to press the lower hand button if one of the pieces of information does not fit you. Okay. We always have well over 100 people with us. So please try if you can to take all the information that he he has said, you know, if it all fits, then raise your hand. All right. If you are somebody who works with Mitch or any medium, um, first of all, I'm going to press a button on my side. You'll get something that flashes up that says host would like you to unmute. And there you'll see the unmute button. We just need your voice. Don't worry. You won't be on camera. All right. But when you work with Mitch or any of the mediums, do your best to let them do the work. We all want to know that our mediums are really communicating with people that no longer walk this earth. So they should be the ones bringing through the memories and the descriptions and all of that, not us volunteering the information. So we just ask that you say yes, no, or I don't know to the information that Mitch gives. If something isn't a fit, don't worry about saying no. No simply means new opportunity. Um, Mitch has been a medium since he's been a very young man, so um, he's got broad shoulders. So don't worry about that. Honesty and integrity is uh, most important. So just say yes, no, or I don't know. And for everyone, even if your loved one doesn't come through, like I said, these folks are representatives of all of our loved ones feel the love feel how close they are feel how they witness things happening in our life and you never know and i feel this so often when a message comes through i need that i need a little bit of that so i think they have it designed more than we could possibly know so we always like to play a piece of music before we go into our medium demonstration phil has picked for us today share if i can turn back time uh, she still looks good no matter how old she is, that lady. So just 
be with your loved ones, just feel their love in this invisible space around you. And then when we come back, we will have a Mitch again, and he will be doing our demonstration of mediumship. So here is the glorious. You got to love a little share, huh? <laughs> Hi, Mitch. <laughs> I, I was not expecting that, I must admit. It's a little bit of fill. Phil. <laughs> Well, hopefully I'm not like Cher at the end where I'm lying flat on the floor. Going, oh, my grief. Um, but yes. Um, right. The, the weirdest thing is, is before the demonstration, I absolute my stomach's churning to hell. And sometimes I feel and like as though I just want to be physically sick. Um, it, it's, it, 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 it hasn't changed. As you said, it's been many, many years I've been doing this. It's actually reassuring in a strange sense. But it doesn't make it any easier when when you're going through it. It's um, it, you same as the first time. So right, I am aware, and I am aware of a communicator, but I'm not yet sure whether it's male or female. But what I the reason why I say is, but what I keep hearing. Uh, as brother and I keep seeing the word brother so I'm just trying to work out with them whether it's actually brother that I have or they wish to reach out um, to to their brother um, let me just work with this I am aware I have a lady but I also do have a gentleman as well. Um, but I feel that I have brother and sister. Uh, now this may be sister-in-law, but I know it's brother and sister in the spirit world and I need to reach my brother um, here. Um, what I am also aware of is I am aware of the lady, she takes me back to a moment in time for her. And I feel as though the 50s, 60s were, as we would have referred to then, in a, her heyday. Um, but I, I, I feel that, uh, as I'm aware, a brother, he's now stepping forward. I feel that I had cancer before I passed, but also that I had other uh it's it feels like it started in my chest but it spread to the other organs within my body uh and and if the determination and the steely determination with brother uh, is, is is a marked um, character trait i'm also wet in the name of peter that would connect i'm not sure whether it's the recipient or uh, the communicator's name, but I feel as though there's a connection there with Peter and also Mary as well. So can anybody understand that? All that rambling that I've been doing with Did you see to... you're looking for a gentleman? I in... felt as though I got to speak to get to brother. Now it may be that brother's not on and able to take the information, but I've I've got Mary uh, which, and and I felt as though I've got brother and sister in law. So it may be brother's <laughs> wife or of, of, of the two but I know I've got this cancer condition and it started in my chest but it went down I feel as though it also went into my liver um, and other areas in, my, in, the, in the main trunk of the body all right thank you all right is there anyone who can understand this information go ahead and press your raise hand button all right Mitch we have Greta with her hand raised Greta if you could press your unmute button. hi there hi Greta. Hi. Hi. So, do you understand um, brother and sister in the spirit world? Brother, but the right. sister, no. Right. But the, and the cancers, I can understand. You understand that. But do you have sister-in-law in the spirit world? No. Okay, let me just work with this. And do you understand the names of Peter and Mary? Yes. 
Okay, let me just work with this a little bit more because I know I kept it, it, it the, the brother, but is, is there another sibling that you have here as well? Yes. Brother. You have a brother. You have another yeah. brother. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, let me just work with this because um, I'm working with with the, the, the personality uh, of, of your brother. Would you understand that I know I was aware of this lady and I'll come to her, and, but you understand mm -hmm. your brother. Would you understand your brother's personality, one of being a gentleman, where he would always uh, uh, let the lady speak first? Yes. Uh, because I know that I was I was being courteous. I was waiting. I wanted, I, I didn't want to jump in. And yes. that would have been part of your brother's personality. Yes. Because I know that I wait for the opportunity and he would have been very patient in the way his approach because he's he's coming in like a very calm controlled yes manner. very um and i'm aware that at the end of his life that's something that he was no longer able to be in control and be in this calm state i feel that i was quite agitated before i passed you understand that no. Can you understand that with your brother, there were certain things that were taken away from him. I yes. know with illness, that, but there was things that he was he that mattered to him and his responsibility. And it's like the decisions are taken away from me, and that would have frustrated him. Yes. Right. Okay. Because he's not again. He's not forcing that anything upon me he's he's letting it happen and when we talked to mentioned obviously with with time but he was somebody who had the patience to let things unfold has been mentioned yeah. Before. Yeah. and what i am aware of is that with you at this moment in time your patience has been pushed because you want things to unfold a little bit quicker Do yeah. you understand? yes yes and that's why it's relevant why he's the one who's come because he right. wants to bring his patience and his ability to just bring a bit of calmness to you because yes. you've done everything that you can do that is within your realm of being able to control and to do and unfortunately now it has to be waited upon others to actually do their part you understand okay. that okay uh -huh. and you know as Sarah, uh, sorry as sandra said um at, at the beginning about they will use anything because you just made me aware of the process that we are in where with moving a house and the certain things that i can do and change and other things that i can't yeah but you so understand within your not just i'm saying with you but there's others within your family yes. are in the process of moving and, and changing and he it's his way of just letting you know i know what's going on and he often kept his ear to the ground yeah he didn't let on that he knew and he was also he would be if somebody gave him the same news twice he would be surprise oh right i didn't know yes yeah. and the reason why he's touching on that is that your patience has been tried recently whereas somebody keeps repeating the same thing to you over and over again yes i can take that yes and he's just wanting to say i'm aware i know what right. little things that are going on and those are the things that matter Mm -hmm. the little things mattered he looked after those little things yes and what i'm aware as well with him that where his money was concerned he looked after the pennies as we end this country we say we look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves but i'm aware that he he always kept an eye on where things are and where my money is and what's going out and what's not going out and there's been conversation around that within your group um of friends yes. these last few weeks that you've been discussing this quite you know 
where things need to go and putting things aside and planning for the future. Yeah. What he wants to get across there is the thumbs up with this planning for the future. It's important that we look to see what can come. I know you said no about this, about um, sister, but I, the lady and the image has just come back up. So it, I may be wrong in saying your sister or sister-in-law, but I'm aware of this lady who would, who comes in and her in the fifties and sixties, because it's the dresses that I'm seeing, not um, like what I call a puffball one, but it's like, it's oh. flowing out pinched in at the waist and, I, and i'm aware this this lady with um it's like i'd say a candy floss hairdo cast the hairdresser I don't yeah. Know, you know, yeah. but i'm aware of this and it's a lady with blonde hair and you would know somebody just just remember because this is coming back in so please take the information you've understood everything else but i'm, yeah. I'm aware of this lady coming in and i feel that she would have been around you in that the late it's like the late 50s early 60s i'm aware of this connection so would you just please remember this because she just so I will. remembered to you but i feel as though this connection will also get you to a moment it's just freeing your mind to right. do what you want to do within your soul and not to actually worry and be concerned what other people think. Right. Okay. Because yes, thank that's you. something that you have done throughout your life, been always considered what other people have said and yes. actually stopped you from doing things. And I know that I need you to just be that little bit freer. Yes. Right. So thank you for speaking to me, Greta. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, Mitch, and everyone else for listening in. Right. Um, I am aware of a lady, um, and it does feel to me as though it's mum that, that I have. But what I was aware, most importantly, was um, the terminology that I got to use. Even though I've said mum, but mother. And... I'm aware that this lady uh, took her responsibility as a mother very, very seriously. And I am aware that she was like a lioness when it came to her children and to the point where this lady would, and there would have been occasion when this lady would have gone to school and tore a strip off a teacher for speaking and not being right by one of hers because I, I, I can't, she's very much wanting to to make me aware of this because i i have the mum aspect but also the mother the protective mother and what i'm also aware with this lady was that she would have been very good with her hands and I know around the home and I know that would fit a lot of uh, different mums, but I'm aware here that this lady's uh, hands would have deteriorated uh, through arthritis, but I'm also aware that in particular the little fingers really are coming in and um, there would have been a, a distinct problem with the little fingers on both hands i feel so can anybody understand that please thank you mitch can any who can understand this information about this lovely lady go ahead and press your raise hand button okay we have rosemary and rosemary do you want to type in the chat box yes and no we don't have let's see here Yes. Okay. So Rosemary's going to use her chat, the chat box. We don't have Rosemary's voice for this. Do you understand this with my, the little fingers, Rosemary? Yes. 
okay because i'm aware and you'd understand your mum also within going in a school environment and then um, telling somebody right <laughs> that was that was very quick <laughs> because and it, it's that mother um role and the lioness and the protective um nature within her but not just with you with other children and other people who she came in contact with yes okay because i know that this uh, as i was trying to get more information from her your mum was somebody who she did things and at her own speed it didn't matter if you tried to rush her she wanted it done at a particular time it was done at that time not before yes okay because um she wanted to get get that across to me right there is a significance of 2 p.m and I feel that it's to do with the passing. Do you understand that, Rosemary? No. Okay. Because as I was just working and then uh, waiting for your response, I was aware of this, that this time came in. Let me just put that to one side for the moment. Can I ask, and well, it's more of a step. I feel as though your mum would have been quite good um, at dominoes and cards. No. no. Right, okay, that's fine. Well, you would have memories of watching your mum playing these types of games. No. Okay. Do you understand this with someone else? Mitch, we do have someone else with their hands raised. Okay. Rosemary, do you understand that information with someone else other than mom? No. Right. Okay. Well, so let's just so just okay. If, if, stay with us there, Rosemary, because I, I know that I got this information with Mum. But Denise, if you could press your unmute button, I accidentally muted you. And Rosemary, you stay where you are. Hi, Denise. Hi. How are you? But can you understand this information? I understand. It, my great grandmother um, had. She loved being a mother, grandmother, great grandmother. She had arthritis in 95% of her body and our family plays cards all the time. And right. she did. Okay. But do you understand this also where I'm, I'm seeing dominoes as well? Uh, no, I only understand cards. She may have played dominoes at someone else, right. um, but she also lived in Maine in the 1930s. So who knows what they did back then? <laughs> <laughs> um let me just work with this let me just because i, I what i kept seeing was the cards but i also saw um the dominant would you understand with your grandmother you, you expressed that she would have been somebody who was very quick with uh, adding up math as as as, as you refer, i have to knock the s off for us we stick, put stick the s, s on the end but she'd be able to add up and subtract very quickly. That is no, or right. yes. I, she got A's in math. That's all I know. Right. Okay. Because I kept seeing the domino. I was adding the, I was adding the, the dominoes up and We do have another person with their hand raised, Mitch. Right, there's something else I've got. I was just about to, to, to go with that because I wasn't um, so Doris. Bring her in and bring in Doris. Yep. Doris, if you could press your unmute button. And Denise and Rosemary, stay where you are. <laughs> Hi, Doris. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Mitch. Hi. Hi, Doris. How are you? 
So do you understand the situation at the, the second okay. half? First I, I, I can take the first half too, except for mother, I have to say godmother. And uh, the, the fingers, I am not quite sure because I wasn't in the area, but the person couldn't use her hands anymore. Right. And definitely dominoes. Right. Cards, cards and dominoes. And, and she definitely was a mother hand. You know, really uh, no. but, looking after the family and really protective. And Because it wasn't quite working right with Denise. Um, so, uh, but I did feel uh, uh, this other aspect come in. Um, would you understand um, with your mum that this adding up and subtracting, this ability to work very quickly with numbers? Yes. And you'd also understand that it's something that you've inherited is the way that I want to be. I definitely have that, yes. Okay, and you would understand there's been a time within your life, but also within your mum's life, where there's been a need to work with figures. Yes. Um, as as in a, a, a job, a role. Yes, mine, mine was a job, yes. Yeah, okay, because I'm aware of this, of um, particularly where, um, not, and I'm not saying that you're not honest with money, but I'm <laughs> saying you work with your Thank you. With your mom. <laughs> That she can be trusted with other people's money and uh, not trusted at times to look help other people with their money. Now, that one I'm not aware of. Right, let me just give you some more information. You would understand that your mum would see it as her purpose to make sure that people had bank accounts and savings set up in their name. Yes. Okay. Because I'm aware of this, uh, this fact of wanting to make sure that there is the, there's money available for people. Yes. Okay. But not, and it's about this putting it, as we say, putting it to one side, so as you can actually have that money later on. Correct. Right. Saving and, and and being prepared for what you're yes. going to do. I can take that. Okay, but you would understand why at this moment in time there are decisions and that that need to go on around you where you're going to allocate money and you start, you've, there's been discussions and thoughts of what you're going to do with it. Correct. And this is why she's coming in here to offer an opinion because with <laughs> money concerned, you make your own mind up. Okay. That's true. <laughs> and if you really want something, you're going to have it. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd understand that within your mindset that. Yes, yeah, so I know. I get it. I get it. But I it, it, it's nice for her to confirm it. Thank you. Okay. Because this is, uh, uh, this is what I'm aware of. And I'm aware of from your mum the fact that there were so many times that she tried to tell you, to guide you, but you are happy to get your fingers a little bit burnt so as you have knowledge and experience yourself. That is correct. Because I know that you wanted to, to get that and acknowledge that. But what I'm aware of here, not that you're going to get your fingers burnt, but the fact that you are going to be in a place where you can actually, you're going to decide rather than being told what to do. That okay? is correct. Yes. This is where I've got investments and things like that. Yes. I, I, there's, there's, I'm just moving things around and wanting to allocate them in the right places. Um, but I'm also dividing funds, okay? This is what yes. she's making me aware of. Uh, I don't want to give all you, you know, I've got no, she's not giving me any numbers, so I don't <laughs> know about any, you know, just a few um, dollars or whatever. You know, yeah, or, no, I, you know, I understand what she's talking about. Thank you. But, but, the fact that you understand that's important because I know that I want to get this over, but I'm also aware with it, that there's a shift within you about your list of priorities and that within the last 12 months, that's changed quite considerably of what your priorities are. Correct. And she wants to get across to you that you, you're not to feel guilty because you will find peace. 
and you've taken a long time searching for that piece. Do you understand that? Yes, I do, and thank you. Okay, that, that's fine, because it was important that she get that across, because she just wanted to bring that piece. But also, she's, as I said about that piece for that peace of mind, she's just given me the dove of peace. And so I feel as though there will be a reconciliation with you. There's someone that you've not been seeing eye to eye with, and you, she wants to wish you well within that process that you wish to renew. Do you understand that? I do understand it very much, and I but, really appreciate her telling me that. Right, because that's her way of letting you know that she's about. Yeah, it's wonderful. Thank you. So thank you very much, Doris. Can I appreciate just the contact. No, no problem at all. Just going back to Rosemary. Rosemary, I know you didn't understand the second part. Of, you would understand with your mum that there's a generosity of spirit that she would allow someone else to come in. Because it's like, okay, I can be nice when it's the, there's an there's a need for it. Okay, um, because I know they've got this lightness and this fiery, um, protective. Uh, nature but and and she's making me so aware of calf honestly it's it's funny there's like there's so many similarities but that you know Kath fought so much with the medical profession and you understand that obviously because with your situation with you and with your mom that there's this ability that the value but I've also got to say to you there's been a change within your awareness and what you've been aware of from the spirit world she says exactly with lots of exclamation points <laughs> and she wants to encourage you to spend that little bit more time that you can sitting with the spirit world because she enjoys the conversations that you can freely have together you understand that? Because she wants. Thanks so much, she says. She just wants to, you to know that that is the one blessing in her passing. And it's important that I put it in that way too. It's a blessing to be able to have this flow of conversation. But the one thing that she misses so much is the laughter of hearing the laughter yes okay but also not just yours but also her own because there was times you and your mum would laugh at things and see things and see the world in very similar ways particularly where people are concerned and pompous people yes okay and she just wants you to keep that that joy and that humor within your soul because it's beautiful it truly is thank you Rich. thank you for hanging around for me rosemary um it was a pleasure right do we have time santa for you do, if you yeah, yeah, yeah. Take one more. Um, right okay um because i'm aware of a gentleman um and I'm aware of Matthew that would link and would connect um, with who is the recipient. It just as I'm aware of this gentleman, it does feel to me like it's dad as, as I'm aware of it. And I feel as though dad would have loved being outdoors because what I'm aware of is... Uh, uh, is it's just mowing the grass. I'm up on the roof. I've got uh, all the messy, but it's like I've got some land around him, um, and the the mower's out there. And it was almost like um, it was his therapy. He'd go and mow stuff, even if he'd have been mowed the day before, because it was his way of switching off and dealing with things. Okay. Now we had, yeah, I was going to say, before, <laughs> I know we had hands that went up. So we have two hand, two ladies that with their hands raised. Three. Okay. 
Um, okay. Um, would the, all, of all three of them, would they understand that there would have been a reasonable amount of uh, lawned area around? Because I feel as though it's almost like, not around on all sides, but at least two, possibly three sides that I have this lawned area. A good amount of lawn within two or three sides of the house. A good amount. So if you don't have a good amount of lawn, put your hand down. <laughs> so the hands keep going up. That can take. Oh, right. Up. Okay, we're getting more. Right. Okay. No, that's yep. fine. Let me just work with this because what I'm aware of the property as I, as as I'm aware of it, I feel as though there would have been wooden steps going up to a veranda on the front of the house, and it would have um, been pitched and would have been what I, what I refer to like a chalet style of home. Okay, I'm uh, going to lower everyone's homes, uh, hand, homes, hands, because there, <laughs> there are about seven people with their hands up. If you can take all that information, including the chalet style home and those wooden steps, go ahead and press your raise hand button again, please. And I think we lost everybody. Mitch. Oh, I've done well there. I've, I've achieved a great deal. Oh. We have not. We have not. Well, right. maybe we have. <laughs> oh, hang on. Okay, it's like popcorn going up. Yeah, okay, I'm getting bemused now. Has her hand raised. Let's bring in Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Thank Hi, you. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Jeanette. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I wasn't sure if I had the thing hooked up right. <laughs> <laughs> so, just going back to the beginning, then. So you would understand, Dad. One. The law, bit, lots of lawn around the ten the acres. Right, okay, that's plenty of lawn. Um, but you'd understand this need to with, with dad that he would go out and cut the lawn as well yes. when he wants to think things through. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's instead of having an argument, I'll go and mull it over and, and be grumpy on my own. Right. Um, <laughs> do you understand? And that's his his way yes. of when his sense of humour was back. Oh uh, yeah. Um because it's almost as though like you know, I could just do with posting it in the mail to myself sometimes you know, that I know I'm gonna be grumpy. But when it, it, there's there's a recognition within him that he was being grumpy and he would also play on that sometimes. Do you understand that with him? No. <laughs> okay. Well <laughs> you see no, but I'm aware that sometimes I would portray grumpiness actually I wasn't bothered, but it was also a little way of getting back a little bit. And okay, a little, yes. Am I, you understand that there's like this to and fro in. But I'm, I'm also, would you understand also the name of Matthew as well? That would connect. Um, my nephew. Right, okay, that, 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 that's fine. Because I knew that I got to use the full title. I couldn't shrink it um, down. I'm, I'm, I'm using the full title and that was very much your dad in the way that he was as a person. He was very, he, he believed if you were given a title, that's the name that you should be known by. Right. He didn't yeah. want things to be shortened. Right. Okay. Um, and also he had that patience to follow things through. Oh, yes. End. Yes. Okay. Because I know you said that about having all that, that, that land to mow and everything, but it, it all had to be done within a system. And yes. that it was important to him that it, it happened in that system. And even if the weather had changed, he'd still go back to that was the last, that was the last place that I was. And I continue. Okay. And what I'm aware of, that the reason why he's bringing those aspects forward here, there are things that you've been thinking about picking back up again. Yes. And this is why he's doing this process of instead of starting halfway through, we're going back to where we need to start and working our way through it again. Okay. Okay. And that's why he's brought that aspect of his personality forward because that dedication and also that, work ethic you know that's part of who you are we all know sometimes we'd like to just cut a few corners but what i'm aware of here for you to get the true benefit of what you want to do you need to go through the full process you understand that Jim? yes and it's not that um 
you should f- you feel guilty if you just get I'm, I'm aware of like snakes and ladders and sometimes it's nice to climb that ladder and just skip a few bits right. but i'm also aware that there are times that we need to then go back and do things um because we've missed bits out right okay and what i'm aware of with that was what is making wanting to get across here is where the, the skills and the things that you need to learn you know that you need to bolt on additional skills to what you already have right and he really wants to encourage you with that okay don't be intimidated because he's just standing looking at the 10 acres and thinking i don't want to start this (laughs) intimidating but if i break it down to that lawn that lawn and that lawn it all becomes manageable and that's what he wants to just get across to you there. And take that approach and it all becomes easier. Okay, thank you. Right, and, you, and he knows that you could just do with a little bit of easy at this moment in time. Because yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's also wanting um, to give you tulips. And also I'm take, being taken to the month of May. Um, oh, that's my birthday. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> you beat me to it. Um, but I know oh, that. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I was, um, and I know that I've just wanted to give, because that's that significance within the, the particular types of the flower meant to him. And when he saw them, he always thought of you when he saw you. Okay. All, right. All right. Thank you very much. Right. For Thank you. I believe that's time. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. Thank you so much for volunteering your time. We're all volunteers here on the Sunday gathering. We are. And if your loved one didn't come through, please know that they communicate with us. And we sometimes are so busy, not in the present moment, that we don't think it's them. But sometimes randomly thoughts and memories will come to your mind. And as Mitch was talking about feeling a little bit anxious and excited and they pay attention to your feelings because that is how they work through our feelings they're with us so much more than we could ever expect not everybody can turn lights on and off on demand but they are with us and then mitch greta wrote in the chat box that she understood the information with her sister-in-law about the 50s so some announcements and then we're going to pass it over to darren in just a moment for some empowering words from the week but once again um, mitch and kath shirley they're at the soultrust.com on the 27th of february they're offering the free grief cafe everyone's welcome it's not recorded it is private uh, but it's very special and healing also they'll be running our two classes coming up on february 28th and 29th which is the structure of a psychic reading and the structure of a medium reading so it's our psychic faculty that is in charge of everything and mediumship is a part of that so everyone's invited Carrie and Phil asked Mitch and Kath to do these classes as we've had classes that have been going on for years now. And for our all students are welcome. There's breakout rooms that you can practice what they are teaching, but using your psychic and mediumship abilities. They're lovely people. You got to meet Mitch today. And many of you I know have met Kath in the past, but they're really good people. So that's coming up. Also, we want to know, Carrie and Phil, yes, they're heading to New Zealand and Australia. Certainly, you can join them live. They do have this coming week, a three-day class called The Art of Clairvoyance and how it's using all those pictures that come into your mind. There are breakout rooms in that course as well. Um, All of our courses can be enjoyed live or you can watch the video replay if you can't attend them live, but it's about how those pictures come into your mind and how to decipher them and use them to tell the story of the person that is coming through, the loved one. So that is the art of clairvoyance. Also coming up would be the 27th on um, of 
February, get my words together here. Our friend Nick Widom will be presenting uh, a six week class will be on Tuesdays called the history of mediumship. So many people think mediums are just what we see today, working with the spirit world, delivering messages, but there's so much more. I think you'll find a fascinating journey of how mediumship started and it was not this way and all the different ways through language, through the arts and physical mediumship, trance mediumship, and so many things that have happened in our past. And I know they can happen in our future. I just think people need to find out about it. So take a walk down memory lane and learn some fascinating things uh, with Nick in the history of mediumship. Now, how many want to meet Darren in person? He sure is fun to be with. He and Scott Milligan and others, they will be on the road for what's called Together with Spirit. There will be mediumship training, there will be art, and one of them, Sonia Rinaldi, will be there. So they will be on the road coming up soon, heading to New Orleans, Louisiana in April. Sonia Rinaldi will also be there as well, and medium Dominic Bogue. And then in later on in April, they will be in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Uh, after that, Brighton, England. In November, they'll be in Barlow in the Netherlands. So all of this can be found at wedontdie.com. Just click on the store page and you can find out more about all of it. Also this coming Tuesday, you can be with Scott and sit in the power that is recharging your own spiritual batteries. He offers that at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. London time, as well as Friday, we have in the arms of eternity where we sit for healing, followed by a demonstration of trance mediumship. And then we always have an ongoing class with Scott, learning to just slow down, be in the present moment, feel the love from the unseen world, work with our guides and inspirers. So that's called Trance and the Altered States. So again, everything can be found at the store page at wedontdie.com. You can also find my podcast episodes there. We are now well over 600 episodes and my latest episode of We Don't Die Radio. I interview Minister Jackie Wright, who is the president of the Spiritualists National Union. And they're in charge of the Arthur Finley College and many other great things. So there's good information. Last, I want to just say thank you to those of you who have donated to our Sunday gathering to make it possible. We really appreciate it. We never pass around a plate or put a pop up to how you can give, but I want you to know your donations, they really make a difference for us. Anyone who wishes to give, you may uh, go to wedontdie.com. You can click on the Sunday gathering page. There's a donate button there if you're if you should want to, um, but also you can find the past Sunday gatherings. The, you can watch the replays and then also register for the upcoming ones. So that's it for the announcements. I'm going to pass it over to Darren for some words for the week and then the closing prayer. Thank you for that, Sandra. The word time. How many of us can wish our time away? I do it all the time. Yeah, you, know, you, you think, oh, I can't wait for this day to end. Oh, I can't wait for this week to end. Oh, I've got a vacation booked in September. Why can't it be here now? But by doing that, and Sandra, I think you got me right in that story you read earlier. Um, how many of us do that and we neglect all that time in between? You know, we've got all these minutes, hours, days in between these things we're wishing away. And we don't put any thought into that, what we want to do, what we want to achieve. We just want to skip it or fast forward. But, you know, we can miss so many crucial things within that. You know, we can wish in away our life. We miss so much. And I know yesterday I've had a horrific week this week, so exhausting that after work yesterday, I just wanted to come home, sit on the sofa and have a takeaway. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? I was so excited for it. And in the last minute, we got invited around to a friend's house for dinner and movies and what have you. And part of me inside was dreading it. I'm like, I'm so tired. And I was so looking forward to just cuddling up on the sofa, takeaway, and that, that's me done for the night. But I got talked into going. And I said, but I'm going to fall asleep. I know I am because um, I'm so tired. But do you know what? We went round. Yes, I did fall asleep, but we had a fun night. We had, you know, it was off the cuff. You know, we, it, we had memories created. And I thought, do you know what? I'm glad I did it now. Um, and sometimes you do. You have to live in that moment and be spontaneous. So you don't miss those moments in time and build those memories. So 
I'm going to take something from this and try and change my thought process and trying to live each moment and not try and jump ahead of myself. Yeah, we have things to look forward to, like vacations and all that kind of stuff. But let's embrace each day. Let's embrace each hour, each minute. Let's enjoy life. Let's not wish it away. Because, you know, Cher sang that song for us, If I Could Turn Back Time. Do you know what? As clever as we all are, none of us can do that. So let's not regret what we've missed and all those opportunities, those moments. Let's embrace it. Let's embrace each and every moment and live the best life and the happiest and the most fun life we can live. So don't, you know, never pass away time. Anyhow, if you'd all like to close your eyes and join me for today's closing prayer. We'd like to thank our friends, brothers and sisters from within our lands for coming here together, united as one under that banner of We Don't Die. And for each and every one of you playing your part to allow the two worlds to come together as one. And to our dear friends, helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen. We'd like to express our sincere thanks and gratitude for everything you do and for being here with us each and every Sunday and allowing us the opportunity for us all to come together under the banner of We Don't Die and experience the wonders of the Sunday gatherings and for allowing us all to absorb your words and your thoughts and your inspiration and allowing us to be immersed within that healing balm and that unconditional love which will be etched in our hearts and our minds forever. Each and every one of us deems an absolute joy and privilege to walk hand in hand, side by side with those in the unseen world. And we do our best to represent the unseen world here today. And we truly hope we've made a difference and made you proud. As we leave this Sunday gathering and allow the sun to set on this day, we go forward to a new day and a new week. Each and every one of us walk in our own journeys of life. And we need to remind ourselves that for each step we take, we need to enjoy the present moment and immerse ourselves within that moment in time before we move forward to the next step. And as we do this, we can go forward and to continue to live our lives in the comfort and knowledge to know that those in the unseen world continue to walk by our side, hand in hand, continuing to help and inspire us to be the best we can truly be. And we know we can go forward in our truth that love and life are both eternal. And we ask once more that that healing light continues to shine to all four corners of our world to bring that joy, that healing, that upliftment and that love to all those hearts and minds that are in need on this day and the next. Until we meet again, my friends. Amen. Thank you so much, Darren, and thank you, Mitch, and all of you, wherever you are in the world, thank you, and to our spirit world friends. Our closing song that Phil has picked is Clocks by Coldplay, but I thought we could do a little experiment. So I put a different video and some different pictures on this video. See if you can sit in the present moment, see the pictures, and see what comes to mind, feel what comes to mind. It's just, I think we're so busy in our lives that we're not present. And this is for me too. I don't have it all handled, but let's see if we can be present and see what emotions and feelings come up with this song. Here we go. A little beauty to leave you with. Go be in the present moment. Go share some love. Mwah. We'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Bye everybody.